Hall. It's Kay and Trish with Crafting Cousins. Thanks so much for stopping by. We hope you'll come back often and that you'll subscribe by hitting that little button below. Now, let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this piece that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet for 29 cent. I'm not sure what it was originally, but it is solid wood, and I think once we remove the paper from the front of this, it's going to be perfect for this project. Some silicone molds that I picked up from Amazon, some Sculpey air dry clay, some ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in white, ink, and maize, these cute little daisies that I got from Dollar General, and some leftover leaves from other projects, graphic illustration markers, and a jot permanent marker from the Dollar Tree, Sawtooth Hanger, one of these home words that I got from the Dollar Tree. There's two in a pack. Some paper tape, but you could also use painter's tape. Some super glue fix all adhesive. This wording that I printed off on my computer, it is in the Bumblebee font. You could also freehand this a gold glitter glue stick from Dollar Tree and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I knew I needed to do was remove the paper from this. I was afraid that if I painted over it, it would buckle up or bubble and I didn't want to have to deal with that. But I'm telling you, I tried everything. I tried my hot glue gun, that didn't work. I got my sanding block and it was coming off but not fast enough. So I took it outside and used my electric handheld sander. Once I got all the paper off and it was smooth, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and I'm gonna give the whole thing a really good coat. I did do the front, the back, and all the sides. Y'all know I like for my projects to look the same. And then once it dried, I went back and did some touch up. While that is drying, we're gonna go ahead and make our clay pieces. I take my cornstarch and use a brush and get it down into all of my little molds. This is gonna keep my clay from sticking in there. Then I'm gonna take a piece of my air dry clay and I'll work it in my hands for a few minutes and then we're going to press it down into our mold. You want to make sure you get it in there really good so that all that detail picks up. Now I'm gonna take this little spatula thing that I have, I got it from the thrift store too, and I'm just gonna clean off the back of it making sure that it is smooth and straight across. Once you get all of these in there and get them cleaned up, all you have to do is flip them over and they pop right out. Now we're gonna set them aside and let them dry. While those are drying, I'm gonna take my paper tape and I'm gonna put a piece right across the center of my board. Then I'm gonna take my white Waverly chalk paint and go over just the edge of this so that my other paint doesn't bleed up under it. We're gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna use my maize chalk paint and I'm gonna give the whole thing a really good coat. It did only take one good coat of this and I did only paint the top of it. I did not want it on the sides. We'll get this on here and then we're gonna set it aside to dry. Now I'm going to take my maize paint and I'm gonna paint my honeycomb piece and then I'm going to paint just the bodies of my bees. Now I did only do the bottom part of this because when I looked online, that center part is actually black and just highlighted with some yellow. We're gonna make sure we get those on there and then I'm going to take my ink chalk paint and I'm going to paint the center section of my little bees, their head and their legs. Now you do kind of have to be careful with this because it's easy to get it all over it if you are not. I'm also going to use my ink chalk paint and I'm going to paint the top part of my home word. I didn't do the sides of this, I only did the top and then we're going to set it aside to dry. 
Once the paint is dry, I'm going to take my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to go over the wings on my bees. Now the clay is white and you could leave it just like that, but I wanted it to be a bright white instead of an off white. So that's why I went over it with my chalk paint. Now I'm going to use one of my permanent markers and I'm just going to go over the very top of my honeycomb. This is just going to define it and give it some dimension. Now we'll use a small brush and some of our yellow and just kind of highlight the very top of the center portion of our bee. And then I'm going to use one of those smaller permanent markers. These are my graphic illustration markers. And I'm just going to kind of clean up there at the top of the bee. And I'm also going to give him some stripes on his body. I did notice that there was some texture on those wings, so I'm going to also use that small marker and highlight that. Now we will remove our tape from our board since our paint is dry, and I'm going to take my ruler and a pencil and I'm just going to go around and make marks all the way across my board. This ruler is about one inch thick and so I thought this was a good measuring. And you don't have to be perfect with this because as you see I'm going to take my finger and smooth these in and this is going to give me a shiplap look. Now to transfer my wording onto my project, I'm going to use my favorite method where I take a pencil and I scribble all over the back of this. Then you place it where you want it on your project and trace over it. This is just going to transfer it onto your project. Now this is a really simple font, so it would be easy to just freehand this, but y'all know I don't trust myself. Once I got this transferred, I'm going to use my Jot Permanent Marker and fill it in. I love these markers. You get two or three to the pack and they work perfectly. Now we're going to put a hanger on the back of this and I did add some hot glue because I was afraid my nails would go all the way through and this bulked it up just enough that I didn't have that issue. We'll nail our hanger onto the back. Then we're going to flip it over and take our home sign. I'm going to use some of my Fix All Adhesive on it for that stronghold and some hot glue for the fast hold and we'll glue it right there onto the yellow section. We'll take our little B, the one that was the largest, use some hot glue and glue it right after the two. I wanted to make a bow for this and I love this ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree. I think the one with the bees is so cute. I did a five inch tail and then we're going to make two four inch loops on each side. You'll see me twisting this and that's just so that my words were right side up on both sides. Now we're going to use that yellow ribbon and we will make a four inch tail, make two three inch loops, one on each side, and then another four inch tail. We'll pull that off and use a piece of twine to wrap around the center and tie in a knot, trim that up, and then dovetail our ends. That just means we're going to fold it in half and cut it at an angle. We'll use some hot glue and attach this bow a little off center to one side. I did have to trim up that tail a little more because it was covering my bee. Now I'm going to use one of those little daisies and I'm going to glue it right in the center and then I'm going to take some of those little leaves and glue right under there just to give some separation between the daisy and the yellow ribbon. I'll take that little honeycomb, use some hot glue and I'm going to glue it to one side and then I'm going to glue one of my little bees right next to it. I decided that I should probably smooth out the edges on this and just kind of make it blend like the rest of it. So I took my pencil and I go around the edge and just kind of scribble on it and then smooth it out with my finger and now it matches my ship lap. I did decide that I wanted some honey in my honeycomb. So I'm going to use that gold glitter glue stick and we'll fill in each one of those little sections, let it dry and with that this project is finished. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week, offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. 
We just know you'll find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these 14 inch grapevine wreaths that I got at Hobby Lobby. I believe it was $4.99, but I got mine a long time ago when they still had a coupon. I'm going to be using some wired ribbon. I got most of mine at Hobby Lobby, but I got some of it at craftoutlet.com. I'm also going to be adding in a yellow with white polka dots. I'm going to be using these two sunflowers. They're quite large, and I made sure that they didn't have a lot of orange on them because that looks more like fall sunflowers, but these will be the kind that will be in the height of summer. I'm going to use a couple of these white flowers that I just pulled from my stash. This row of miniature sunflowers, not sure where I got them from, but I do like them very much. They'll be a nice accent. So if you've ever seen and me finally, make a wreath, some you know ties, this some is pretty stems, I'm and my going hot to start gun. with the bows. And I'm going to make a really large bow first. I'm making about four and a half inch loops on each side, and my tails are at least eight inches. I'm going to do two loops on the left and two loops on the right. Remember, I'm just twisting the ribbon as I go down between the pegs. Now we're cutting that off, and that's all we had left of this piece. The second ribbon, I'm going to be using a one and a half inch ribbon that is yellow with black polka dots, and I'm doing the same thing, except I'm leaving everything a little shorter. Smaller loops, two on each side, and smaller tails. This would look cute with a black and yellow stripe as well, but I didn't have any on hand. So here's the third ribbon, much smaller loops, again, one on each side this time with an extra loop right in the middle and that will help us hide our chenille stem. I'm going to come in with a zip tie through the back here and then I'll place my chenille stem in between there before I pull it tight. And then once I'm satisfied with it that everything's centered, we'll pull it tight, dovetail those ends, and I cut them several times before I was completely happy. And then once again, give it a good fluffing because every bow needs a lot of fluffing to be perfect. Now for the second bow, I'm making about three inch loops on each side and about six inch tails. And I'm going to put two of those loops on each side. Come in with the second one. This is where I added the polka dotted ribbon. This is a one and a half inch ribbon. I'm making smaller loops, two on each side, smaller tails. Third ribbon, I'm going to do a little bit smaller again. And I'm only doing one loop on each side because it is a strong color ribbon. We cut that off, dovetailed our ends, and give our bow a good fluffing. Of course, I once again used a zip tie and I used a chenille stem in the back. This one required a lot of tweaking just a little bit because I'm kind of a perfectionist. Now I'm going to attach it with my chenille stems and a little hot glue at the top to the top left, not right in the center. I want it kind of to be to the side. And then I'm going to put the smaller bow towards the bottom diagonally across. These two pieces are the star of the show for this wreath. For my florals, I'm going to take those two sunflowers and I'm going to cut at an angle right below the second set of leaves. And then I'm just going to kind of poke them down in to the top of the biggest bow and to the bottom of the larger bow until I get them like I want them. You can also use hot glue to attach them. I'm coming in with the white flowers right around the bow, just a little more color. And finally, I'm going to take those miniature sunflowers, I'm going to cut them in half, and I use some floral wire. And I'm going to put the floral wire around the end, and that's how I'm going to attach them down into the wreath. They just didn't have enough stability on their own. So once I get them wired up, I'm going to place them in too. And remember, all of these are wired so you can manipulate your flowers and your bow till you get everything aesthetically pleasing. And that's pretty much it. I love how this turned out. Happy summer, y'all. y'all it's Trish. For this project I'm going to use this little goblet that I got from Goodwill Outlet. It came in a set of four for 59 cent and I knew when I got them that I was going to use them for crafts. 
some of these little daisies that I picked up from Dollar General for a dollar. Some silicone molds of bees. I got these from Amazon, all four for $11. Some Sculpey air dry clay. You can use any brand. Some cornstarch. Some nautical rope from Dollar Tree. Waverly chalk paint in white, ink, and maize. Some graphic illustration markers and a jot marker from Dollar Tree. A candle from Dollar Tree. Some fix all adhesive and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I needed to do was make my little bees with my clay so that they would have some time to start drying. We're going to brush some cornstarch in there. This is just going to keep our clay from sticking in the mold. Then I take a little bit of my air dry clay and I work it in my fingers for a few seconds and then just press it down into the mold. Now when I'm pressing it down, I want to make sure that I get it down really compact so that it gets all of that detail and I take off as much of it as I can with my finger. Then I'm just going to use a scraper and clean off the back and make it as flat as possible. Once you do that, you can flip these over and pop them out and then we're going to leave them to dry. Now, I had already started working on my glass and I realized that I wasn't recording. I happened to look over and see it before I finished, thank goodness, so I was able to start the camera. All I did was separate my rope. It comes apart in like four different pieces. And then I just start gluing it around my glass. I am using hot glue and it stuck really well. I just put down a good line of it and then I stick my rope down into it and press it down so that it meets the rope below it. You're gonna keep doing this till you get to the top. Then we're gonna trim it off and glue that down. Now I'm going to use my lighter and burn off all those little hairs and the little pieces that stick out. To me, this just kind of cleans it up, makes it look better. Then I'm going to use one of my Jot Permanent Markers and I'm going to draw a circle in the front and then color that in. Now you could also just use your paint to do this if you want to. Once I get that completely filled in, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and another little piece of that rope, and I'm just going to go right around the outer part of the circle and glue this down. This is going to represent the opening of my bee skeep. When we get to the end, we'll trim that off and just secure it with a little more glue. Now I'm going to paint my little bees. You paint them however you want to. I just grabbed some of my maize chalk paint and I painted their little bodies yellow. And then I'm going to use one of my markers and I colored in the head black. Now you could also paint this as well, but it was really tiny and I felt like I had more control by using these smaller markers. Once I get those filled in, I'm gonna use a little bit of white paint and go over the wings. Now the clay is white, but it's not a bright white, so that was why I decided to paint these, but you really don't have to if you don't want to. Once we finish our wings, I'm going to take another one of those little markers and I'm just gonna go over the back end of it and give him some stripes so that he looks like a honeybee. I also touched the very tip of the tail and kind of gave him a little stinger. I thought it'd be cute to have some honey coming out of my skeep. So I took one of those gold glitter glue sticks that you get from the Dollar Tree and I ran it through one of my glue guns and I just had the honey dripping out and let that dry. Now we can decorate our skeep. I'm gonna take a couple of those little daisies that I got from Dollar General. We'll put some hot glue on there and just kind of stick those to the top. I thought I was gonna use three, but three was really just too much, so I stuck with two, but you do whatever you like. And then I wanted to add some greenery, but the leaves on those daisies were too big for my skeep. It just kind of overwhelmed it. So I grabbed some of these small leaves that I had in my stash. I had them left over from another project and I just cut those down and stuck those in there just to kind of give it some greenery and a little more color and life to it. Now we will take our little bees and we're going to use some hot glue and attach those. I did use all four of them. I put one going in the opening, one on the leaf. I had one just on the skeep and then I decided to add one to the flower as well. Now all we have to do is add our candle and with that this project is finished.
Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye, y'all!